Hi, and welcome to the Becoming Trauma-Informed podcast, where we help you understand how your past painful experiences are affecting your current reality and how you can shift those so you can create your desired future. I'm Dr. Lee, and both myself and our team at the Institute for Trauma and Psychological Safety are excited to support you on your journey. We talk about all the things on this podcast. No topic gets left uncovered. So extending a content warning to you before we get started, if you notice yourself getting activated while listening, invitation to take care of yourself and to pause, skip ahead a bit, or just check out another episode. Let's dive in. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode. I'm very excited. I feel very excited. I have the lovely Torn McGill with me here today. And Torn and I met actually so funny because right right before this I was like oh I'll talk about where we met and then we'll go in and I'm like wait did we meet in Julia's space which Julia's space did we meet in I knew of you in Julia Wells space and I met you in Queen Julia's space okay yeah Julia Robinson okay who was JBT at the time yes um yeah so I you know I'm no longer really in Julia Wells' space and um Julia Robinson is is uh one of my like absolute favorite humans in the world uh yeah so we were in the black and bougie mastermind together yes that's right okay now I'm remembering yeah which was a, I think it was a stretch for both of us because for me it was like I'm gonna be in this space with a bunch of these gorgeous <laughs> black women and like I've never really been in this space with a bunch of other black women and like identified in that way I've, I've talked about on here before that's been a big source of shame and and trauma for me around like kind of being in between and going, am I allowed to be in these spaces? Am I not allowed to be in these spaces? And you've been a huge, like, what the heck are you talking about? Of course, of course you get to be in this space for me. So you've been a source of like comfort and friendship in the, in that way. So I'm glad. Thank yeah. You. So I don't ask people like what they do. Cause I think that that's just such a, <laughs> to use a pleasure term, vanilla way of being like, right. So like, what's this thing that you do to like, be able to pay your rent and eat food like that's not a like what do you love like what are you what do you get really passionate about like what do you bring into the world like who are Mm. you I love the reframe of that so what I bring into the world is fun humor and permission and it comes in the form of me being the pleasure priestess and that is like the big umbrella I brag, I'm multifaceted. And so I am very passionate about body freedom. I'm very passionate about having the best sex of your life and whatever that best looks like, feels like for you. I'm very passionate about feelings and emotions and allowing ourselves to express them so we can no longer suppress anything else, right? Whether it be our sexuality or our desires. I'm very passionate about people being safely home in their bodies. Mm. Um, A lot of people are like, you know, come home to your body. I'm like, yeah, but if your body's not a safe space, that's not where you want to go. So I'm very passionate about being safe back in your body and moving it for the sake of it feeling good and not for the sake of some other kind of measurement, right? Mm -hmm. That it's, it's really because this is what feels good when I do this. This is how I feel good when I do this not because I need to be a size zero or, you know, have the most muscles in the world. Although the muscles are nice. They are. You know, I, oh, I love what you said there. Thus, I want to talk about the suppression versus the expression part, because that's huge. And Mm -hmm. I think that's something that would be super helpful for our listeners. And also the part of that you just said of like, how can you feel at home in your body if your body's not a safe space. And and I think that that's a really important piece of this. We actually just shifted the name of our Facebook group and we took out the creating safer, more shame-free spaces. And the reason was, is because a lot of people, I think that that drove them to join our group because they wanted to, to create spaces externally that were safer. Mm -hmm. And in reality, what we've found over these last two, two and a half years of the Institute being in existence is like, that's all fine and well. And you can't create externally what you don't have internally. It will crumble. Right. Yeah. I think that shows up in many places that we forget about, right? Like we totally think if I just get to this, 
when I just get to this, um, and that is one of the things that I'm also most passionate about is that your pleasure is not a reward, it's a resource. So mm. when you are using your pleasure as a resource, the journey of getting to there feels a whole lot better mm. versus being on the path of worrying to get there, right? Like, yeah. How do I make this happen? How do I make this happen? And when we move from our pain points, the things we build are not sustainable. But when we move from our pleasure as a resource, we have sustainability. Okay. I'm over here moaning. That's my little sacral generator human design going, "Mm, mm, mm." like, that's how you know I'm really feeling something if I'm making all the noises. Can you just kind of like, I don't want to say give the definition for pleasure, but how we were talking about this a little bit before we started. The way I understand pleasure is ascribing positive emotion to sensations. Mm. Yeah. The short version for me is it doesn't necessarily have to be a positive emotion. It's the allowance to feel good Mm. because sometimes things feel good and we're like, (gasps) and it does feel good when you get rid of the quote unquote negative emotions, right? When you move them, you start to find yourself going, oh, that kind of feels good when you express them safely. So for me, the short definition is allowing yourself to feel good. Mm. I love that you say that because sometimes when you get really into a a topic, the way you use words isn't the way that like people, you know what I mean? Like you use words in a way in your community that like anyone outside of that community isn't going to get or like is going to understand it a different way. And I, not that they like, they're not going to get it because you haven't talked about it. Right. Yes. And when I say positive emotion, I just mean, I don't mean good or bad. I mean, like one Mm. of those emotions that's like, yes, you're allowing yourself to like it's allowed to be there. Right. So anger for me can be a really positive emotion. Sadness for me can be a really positive emotion. When I think of negative emotion, it's an emotion that I'm not allowing Mm. that I'm, that I'm judging as wrong. So case in point, this is the story. I was like, I want to weave this story in here somehow. And I don't know why I want to tell this story because it's it's very, it's very personal. I know (laughs) Torin, Torin does this to me. y'all. Um, So my husband's grandfather passed away a few days ago and, you know, things have just been like really heavy and we've really been, this is the first time we've been, I think in grief and both of us, like actually just, I don't want to say fully in pleasure around our emotions, but not in pain around our emotions. Mm. Like, like things hurt. We're feeling sad. We're feeling grief. We're feeling confusion. We're feeling all these things. And yet we are judging it as good. Mm -hmm right? We are judging it as positive because we know that this is how we, this is a healthier and like a more intimate and connecting way to process. Mm -hmm. And so we're headed out of town today to go to the visitation and to the funeral. And my dad's coming to help take care of all of our, our, our menagerie of animals. So I'm like running around the house, like trying to get things set up and, and doing the things. And I was like, you know what, we actually have some time to like enjoy each other. And so I noticed that I was having a really hard time having Mm. an orgasm, like having that release. And I said out loud, I was like, I'm like, I can't let myself, like, I don't know what this is. And before I would have never said that out loud. Mm. Right. Like I would have just been like, I wouldn't have faked it, but I would have been like, Oh, forget it. Like I got to get on a podcast. Like we got stuff to do. Like, just forget it. Right. Yeah. And TLC was like, what's going on? And all of a sudden there were all these tears and there was all these feelings. And I said, if after I have an orgasm, I have to go back to all this hard stuff Mm. and I'm so tired. Mm. I don't want the pleasure to stop because I'm deciding that the rest of this has to feel painful. And right in that moment, it was like, wait, but does it, why are you pushing yourself to do things that don't feel pleasurable. Like why can't we approach this experience in like a pleasurable way? Mm. And so then I started thinking like, okay, well I have this podcast with Torin. Like I don't need to do my makeup. I don't even need to put a bra on. Like nobody's going to see anything. I can be in my pajama pants. You can't see my eyebrows right now. It's fine because that's how I feel good. Mm. And that's how I let myself feel good feeling whatever I'm feeling and still do the things that I've committed to do. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with me. And I think that's 
one of the big points, right? Like we, particularly our society who is so wonderfully goal oriented and orgasms are sometimes one of those things that mm -hmm. we are fighting so hard to prove that we've had because then we can prove we've had the thing, right? We've done A, B, and C. I've had an orgasm. It was not <laughs> Our venture was a success, right? We've we reached the end goal. Correct. And we can both stop and things can be done. And orgasms are one of the biggest things that need your permission and need you to feel safe in order to exhibit. So the fact to me that you were able to have that conversation and express that out loud, particularly as women, right? And I think the conversation a lot is around men performing in sex and forgetting that women also do the same thing. So oh, we love yeah. to perform the thing to be like, yeah, uh, 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 uh. right. So, and for you to be safe enough to say to TLC, this is where I am. This is yeah. for him to say back to you, what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then for you to cry all the tears, right? <laughs> we forget that an orgasm is a release, just like tears are released. <laughs> all the things so you just experienced the great teargasm and then was able to wrap it back up of like oh I'm making all these other things pain points and yeah. how can I move to them to my pleasure paces mm. so well bragged so well done thank you yeah I would say I cry I cry a lot now after that type of well, any type of release really but like that type of release and, and I used to make myself so wrong for it because mm. it's like oh my gosh like you know we've been together 20 years and I don't I think that this is probably the last couple of years thing of how do I come back to my own body after having it violated in, in a lot of different ways? How do I find my voice again after being told it has to sound a very specific way? Like, and you know, afterwards there were, there was a ton of tears and I realized I was like, man, we talked yesterday, Torin, you're in our business collective and, and Lucky me. yes, we're, we're blessed <laughs> to have you too. And we were talking about like how we all have this vulnerable kiddo who has needs that a lot of times they don't get met in childhood. And so we develop this harsh kiddo. And for women, a lot of times that harsh kiddo turns internal and is like, you're bad, you're wrong. Your needs are awful. Like you, your feelings aren't good. And we create because of how other people teach us, yes. we create internally this very harsh, unkind, violent, restrictive self. Mm -hmm. And that voice just like, we hear it all the time. And so that was what was happening. The second we were done, I was just like, oh my gosh, I took too much time and I have this and I have this and I have this. And I was like, and TLC was on our call yesterday because he's in the collective. And he said, which kiddo is that? Mm. And I was like, oh, it's my harsh kiddo. And he's like, well, what does your vulnerable kiddo need? And I was like, she just needs to be able to say the things and make the choices she wants to make and not be told she's wrong or not have to like kind of sneak around. Mm -hmm. and then be called a liar right yeah mm. and then all this other stuff came tumbling out and it was hard because it was stuff that I hadn't said it was stuff that like before I would have said in a very manipulative way mm -hmm. and this time it was like no I'm not manipulating anyone I'm just speaking my truth and y'all anyone who hears this can do what they will with it yes I'm expressing not suppressing yes and there's pleasure and potency in that right yeah when you start to use your voice, when you start to move from your vulnerability place, having sex is a vulnerable situation and being present in a body is a vulnerable situation, right? So when you're able to be present and then present with your vulnerability, it is very potent. It is very tender. It is very honest. It is very raw. And sometimes we haven't created or we have not yet cultivated the people around us who can hold that space. So the fact that you're able to create that, cultivate it, and then say it out loud and have you still be held and loved and accepted is huge and wonderful. And yes. it's part of the orgasm scale of orgasms that is like, there's no hierarchy. I need to say this first. There's no hierarchy for orgasms. They are all great and wonderful. And some of them are a little more expansive than others. So some of them include things like emotions, tears, you know, being able to say, hey, this is what I need. And then being able to receive. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Huge. Wonderful. I appreciate your reflections on that because I was like, if anybody's going to be able to just elevate this story and like give context around it, it's Torin. So mm -hmm. thank you for that. So I kind of want to take this in another direction because I know that this is something you've been 
really working through feeling your way through, which is being in pleasure in your work and also being in pleasure as you work on your work, right? You know, in your work is right here. You and I are vibing and and enjoying it. This is a very easy place to (laughs) to be in pleasure, to feel the feelings and and allow it to feel good. For me anyway, I don't want to speak for you. And however, there's other places that being in my business can feel I have to do some allowance work. I'm like, how do I relax and surrender to what is happening here and let it feel good? Mm. And also working on my work, meaning like strategically thinking that we call them the five W's, like who do I want to work with? How do I want to work? Where do I want to work? When do I want to work? What do I want the work to be? And then why do I want to work? We've had a lot of conversations in our collective of like, how do you allow that to feel good? Yeah, it's a practice. And I think that's the most important thing to remember is that pleasure is a practice, particularly since we live in a society that loves to teach you the golden carrot, right? Like we'll just dangle it, you keep working till you die, and then we'll give you a reward. And so just... we <laughs> <laughs> then we'll throw you this great big funeral and spend all this money. And so because that is our viewpoint for the majority of our world, we forget that pleasure is actually an original source. I always refer to, for those of us who believe in the creator story or God or whomever you believe or don't believe, when it is written, it is good. It is not in comparison to it being bad. It 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 is good. And I allowed this to be good. So- because we've moved so far away from our original source of pleasure, we have to practice it. And that includes our work. And for me, it comes up in a lot of places of like, I work with men, I work with women, and I work with relationships. And my work with men has transformed a thousand times, particularly since being in your collective, because there was a lot of older patterns that were showing up as wounds or trauma responses that I needed to work with and through first and part of giving myself permission is like oh let's name this thing oh let's feel this thing let's feel it as far down as it wants to be felt and as wide as it wants to be felt oh now how do I want that to show up in the work that I'm with or in the relationships that I'm with sometimes it comes with putting a specific practice like task oriented like putting a specific pleasure practice I'm going to work five minutes on creating content. Then I'm going to put a pleasure practice after this so that we're making this pleasure sandwich and reminding my brain that this is allowed to feel good Mm -hmm. and I can feel good before and I can feel good after, even in the middle of doing the work. Ooh, you're speaking to something that I think some people might be like, well, of course, like we want to feel good, right? And It is so fascinating to me, just having been in this space, coaching a lot of humans around both business and life, you know, everything for the better part of a decade now. So well bragged. Right. How many of us don't realize we have a story. And when I say a story, I'm not dismissing this belief, but I think it's important to understand when beliefs come from us like the center of who we are versus beliefs are infused or instilled into us. And so I like to call them stories when it's something that someone has instilled into me versus something that's coming from me. Mm, I love that distinction. So a lot of us have a story that it's supposed to be hard. Yes. And that the only way it actually, some of us get a little, a little kinky with this, which I think a lot of people are like, what me? No. And I'm like, "Eh, yeah, but like also, yeah, because when it's not hard, when there's not a little bit of pain, when there's not struggle, well, that can't feel good. Right. We create it. We create the pain. We create the struggle because if I haven't worked to the bone to earn my reward, then I haven't really earned it. Yeah. If someone just gave it to me or I laughed my way through it or it just fell in my lap, then people are going to think that I'm not smart enough or I'm not worthy enough, or I'm going to think I'm not smart enough and I'm not worthy of it, or that I don't deserve it. Because we have created 
a story around no pain, no gain. Mm-hmm. If you don't put in the hard work, you know, like every graduation speech is about work hard. And I'm like, woo, what if today's graduation speech was about feel good? <laughs> Pick I- the job that's going to feel good to you. Pick the school that's going to feel good to you. What if we could move and shift from pain and punishment to pleasure and potency? Mm. You know, I always think of that, the origin story, the Christian origin story of, you know, and thinking about Adam and Eve and, and, and so many of us take from that, like life's going to be pain from, from this point forward. And I'm like, what, you know, I don't know if we take the right message from that. Mm -hmm. What if the message is, is that when you decide that you need to separate yourself from God, that's when things get painful. Yes. Like, what if the message is, if you decide that you are created in my image and like you are infinite intelligence yeah like you're gonna have pain because you're in a human body and that's how shit goes and also we can still be connected like you we can still we can still vibe yes you know and I really don't mean to get like religious well no you know what I there's a part of me that's like I'm not allowed to talk about religion on this non-religious podcast and it's like yeah but like also this is what I believe so this does come from this the center so like Mm -hmm whether you believe that or not, there's a ton of humans on this planet that even if they're like, yeah, no, I don't believe in Christianity or like I, I, my faith somewhere else, or I don't have faith in any of that. You're still getting this message Mm -hmm. because a a lot of people in the planet believe this. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. like, even if you personally don't believe this, this is infused into so much of how we have set up our society. Yes. Yeah, so much of the world, so much of what we pretend to be at war about is who we're at God with. So, and who is God and all of those Mm -hmm. things. And if we're just talking, just talking about the infinite, intimate intelligence, if we're talking about your soulmate, we're talking about your body. Your body is what I believe your soul's mate. Your soul and your body have been agree to be together till death do you part in good times and bad times and sickness and in health. And if you can be the best soul mate to your body, you're going to have to allow yourself to feel good to be in your body. You just going to have to let yourself feel too. Yeah. That part. Right. Like yeah. there are so many feelings, you know, you and Katie Max, who was on here a couple episodes, y'all are besties Love and her. And we were talking about this of like, do, do you want to feel, you want to feel really good again? Like that's a judgment. Mm-hmm. So if you want to be able to feel the things that you're like, wow, these emotions feel really great. You also like, that means you have to be an allowance of all feelings because feelings yes. happen to us. And so if you have a feeling that you're like, Ooh, that feeling that's, that doesn't feel good. Well, that's also a judgment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I think that is part of the misunderstanding of pleasure. People see it as a Band-Aid or a bypass. And I'm here to tell you it is the balm and it is the healing agent, right? It is when you know, I have a space where I can safely express my anger and do no harm to my soulmate or Mm -hmm. anybody else's, this anger is going to fuel change this anger is going to fuel transformation Mm -hmm. this anger is going to fuel my pleasure this anger is going to change the way the world now votes or the way the world now sees me or you know what's accessible or what's not accessible so anger is very important as are so are all of your other feelings and emotions and if you can allow yourself the permission to feel them and be like oh this feels good to feel this anger, to feel this grief. You're, you know, all the way, all the way, all the way back on your pleasure journey because Mm -hmm. you're no longer suppressing. You're now expressing. And that will then show up later of like, you know what? This bra does not feel good. You know what else? I don't, you know, I don't want any other restrictive clothing. I want, I want to be free in things. I want to go commando, right? Whatever, whatever else is going to be in your desire is going to start to show up the minute you allow yourself and give yourself the permission to say the things. Mm -hmm. I'm just also thinking about from like a trauma and a shame perspective, Mm -hmm. 
in a psychological safety perspective, this idea of your body being your soulmate and you prioritizing your relationship with your soul, with your divinity and with your humanity over everything else. Like I just as a woman in particular, I believe that. Right. Yeah. Like I fully believe that that is important. And in fact, the past year has been me really healing that relationship with my body and myself and noticing how much kinder and gentler and more compassionate and loving and excited and playful I can be with other people because, mm -hmm. oh, that's so fascinating. Again, internally, I'm not at war anymore. It makes it a lot easier to not be at war externally. Yes. What got me excited? is you saying the not be at war anymore. I'm like that, I think is many, many keys. And that's one of the things you and Katie talked about. If you could not be at war with yourself, imagine the not being at war with other people. Yeah. If you could look in your self in the eye in the mirror and be like, hey, I like you. Oh my God, I actually love you. We're so cute. Look at that shoulder, right? Like if you get to start admiring your own body and I have a practice that I call a living love story and part of it is you pick a love song that you know you you love and that you someday hope somebody sings to you and you are the somebody who sings it to you mm -hmm. and then you are the somebody who sings it to your body like you literally put your hands on your body and you sing it to your body one of my favorite songs to practice to it with lately is Stevie Wonder's I love every little thing about you mm -hmm. right I love every little thing about you I love the way your stomach jiggles I love the way my thighs jiggle and don't hold form right and to be able to sing that into my body allows my body to be like oh okay so however I show up today I'm still going to be loved yes mm -hmm. however you show up today you're yeah. going to still be loved all of you is welcome here and sometimes you have to start small and sometimes you have to start slow. And I think particularly in our world of, you know, work hard, work until death, that we are like, we need it right now. And when you can allow yourself to slow down, like particularly if you spend a lot of time, like I have outside of in love with your body, trying to meet whatever kind of performance restrictions or costumes or outfits or you know weights that needed to be met for whatever other reason so when you spend a lot of time outside of in love with your body you have to go slow like can I start with my toenails what happens if I get them painted red Ooh, that's kind of sexy okay red's the color until red's no longer the color mm -hmm. right and taking your time and then allowing yourself to take your time with other people. Like, okay, can I maybe hug him with the lights on or hug them with the lights on? Ooh, that was kind of vulnerable. Mm. And I felt kind of good about it. Can we spend 30 seconds looking each other in the eye? Just 30 seconds. And it's amazing to me how hard that is for so many people because they're being seen. And being seen as what we do all the stuff before to not do, right? We work out till death to not be seen. We work out or whatever we do to not be seen. So to allow yourself of like, okay, you can look me in the eye for 30 seconds and I can look at you in the eye for 30 seconds. But what if you started that practice with closing your own eyes and seeing your own body and saying, I love you. I like you. And all of you is allowed. And then you opened your eyes and you saw that across from you. Mm -hmm. That changes everything. So as for me, I have what I call the pleasure priestess methodology. And it's a three, three, five method. And the first three is the three core areas of pleasure, your mind, your body, and your soul, which are also the three core areas of life, mm -hmm. right? And then it comes into the three principles of pleasure consent sensations and anatomy and then we have the five elements of pleasure what i call the works breath work energy work movement work sounding work and thought work what are your thoughts around your pleasure what is your body how is your body expressing that did you give yourself permission and i think that's one of the things we forget all the time and that's why i said 
you know, from the beginning, part of my definition is allowing yourself to feel good. A lot of times we move automatically into the space, right? Without giving myself permission. Is it okay for me to be touched here? How does this feel? Do I want this? Do I want this to continue? Actually, I don't, I don't like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and we forget to give ourselves permission. Hey body, do you want to wear a bra today? No. Okay. You don't have to wear a bra today. (laughs) So I think we just move with assumption and then we are not moving in pleasure. We have stopped to ask. So when we can stop being at war with ourselves, that's going to start initiating the peace within when we're able to say, Hey, you don't have to wear a bra today. Hey, you don't have to do the thing that they're expecting you to do. What is it that you want to do? These things are so small, right? Mm -hmm. And there, there's a study done of like how many people can actually look at themselves in the mirror, like look at, look themselves in the eyes in the mirror for more than 10 seconds. And it's like a super low number. Yes. You know, you want an example of how, you know, you might be at war with yourself. You can't look at yourself in the eye. Yeah. And, it, and sometimes it's because of the things that we've done that we're not proud of. Sometimes it's because of the things that have been done to us that we feel shame around. Sometimes yes. it's because of the like the conditioning that we've been given of like, this part is bad. This part is wrong. Yeah. Feeling feeling good in a bigger body. You know, you and I are both in bigger bodies. And, yes. and can, are you actually allowed to be like, damn, I look good in this bigger body. Like, are you allowed right. to have that feeling of, oh my gosh, I love these parts of me that, I, you know, I'm going to just speak to like American culture is like, you know, you're not supposed to love the jiggly thighs. You're not supposed to love the the belly that, you know, yeah. that the belly that extends past the boobs. You're not supposed to love the boobs that hang lower than like a very specific level, right? Yes. You're not supposed to want to do those things. And the thing that also comes up for me, this is, I don't know why this is popping in my head right now. It, it actually did a couple minutes ago and then it came back is like, for me, singing is, you're talking about sound work, right? Mm-hmm. Singing for me is such a huge thing. And and I I have been told by many people I have a really great voice, right? Oh, and I don't I'm and I don't <laughs> and I don't allow myself to sing a lot in public mm. because there's been just been a few experiences of like of that. And also it's an incredibly vulnerable thing for me to do. And ugh, I'm calling myself in here on the on the podcast itself. You know, part of it is you're already gifted in a lot of other ways. Like you're not allowed to have this too. Right. Oh. You can't be a good speaker and a and a really like smart business person and a good singer. And also you can't love your body too. Like you can't be really pretty and attractive too. Oh. Because like you're gonna make people feel bad. They're gonna be like, oh, Lee's just perfect. And like oh, this is just so funny to me because even saying this out loud. If I met somebody that I absolutely loved and then they started singing really well, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I love them even more. Right. So really that's still me kind of being at war with myself. Right. Of like, you aren't allowing yourself to love all the pieces and parts and accept all the pieces and parts because there's this story of it'll be too much. It'll be Mm -hmm. whatever. But the thing that kept popping in my head was just thinking of my ancestry, like can be traced back to both slave owners and slaves in the US. And thinking about how black slaves we used to sing, they used to sing yes. through their work. Yes. Even as they're like being whipped and forced to be in pain and do things uh-huh. that they don't want to do, they're still singing. Uh-huh. They're still in pleasure. Uh-huh. Like what a badass thing to do right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and some of the songs were about pain and some right. of the songs were you know about freedom and some of the songs were about hurt but they were still being sung they were still being honored they were still being allowed in that voice of like sounding work of like this does not feel good but this feels mm-hmm. good yeah I think it's why you know we sing uh, TLC uh, came with me to my great aunt's funeral. Mm. It was his first black funeral. And he's like, mm. this is, he's like, y'all, are you happy? Like, I, I, what is going on? And I'm like, yes, we're happy. 
Mm-hmm. Like we're sad, we're grieving, but we're grieving from a place of love. We're feeling our feelings. Like our sadness is also mixed with joy that this person has moved on and, and that they're not in pain anymore. And that they're, yeah. you know, if, if when you're religious, you believe that they have gone to heaven and these things. Yeah. And I was like, so yeah, it's both. And we don't make, they're allowed to be in the song and in the room together and we don't make it wrong. Yes. And some people will cry and wail and, yeah. you know, do all the things and it's all still welcome. Yeah. I was just at a service recently and the singer evoked so much from so many of us that after she sang a cappella, mind you, yeah. we all stood up and gave her a standing ovation. And everybody yeah. who was not black was like, what, what are we doing here? And I'm like, we're clapping. We're standing. We're clapping. Everybody get up off your feet. <laughs> so right. it's definitely sound is important and you know this you know when you hear a song or when you hear someone's voice that just resonates in your body and if you are able to use your own voice it's actually so healing to yourself so another great slow practice record your voice saying hey I like you or hey you're welcome here and listen to yourself in the morning listen to yourself say you are allowed to feel good Mm -hmm. you are allowed to feel good you are allowed to feel good and notice how your own body starts to settle into your own voice how I mean we are talking to ourselves all day every day like you said we are running that war tape we are running the plays of destruction all the time upon ourselves so what if that tape started to change and to say you know you're allowed to be in this space you are welcome here. What if that tape started to say, you know, your pleasure is your priority. Does this feel good to you? Mm. Whew, right. And that is healing within itself to yeah. hear your own voice um, just as a way as it's just as destructive and more when we hear our own voice be beat us up. But yeah. when we can hear our own voice. So whether it be out loud or in your head, sound has this way of expanding resonating and healing down deep so definitely start singing first of all and (laughs) I have I actually have I will sing in front of my family now I will I will sing in front of like my in-laws and my father-in-law is always the one that he's like I wish you'd do that more and I'm like I'm working on it (laughs) yeah also something I've seen a lot in my clients too around feeling the pleasure of like making noise making sound Mm -hmm. and you know this connects also back sexually, I think too, because, and, and just really using your voice also like hearing yourself say something when you're standing up for yourself or someone else or where you're dissenting or where you're, you know, asking a question because you don't understand or because, or you're telling someone you're really excited Mm. or you're doing these things that for a lot of us, there's, there's some pain. There's some past painful experiences around us feeling however we felt and then saying a thing, making a noise, using our voice and having that be vilified. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so it's yeah. part of that creating safety first, right? You trusting yourself that you can say the thing and not get in trouble. Or if you get in trouble, you'll be able to clean it up or whatever you need to later. Trusting yourself to represent yourself honestly. So sometimes it starts with saying the no when you really want to say no yeah. and saying the yes when you really want to say yes, including sexually, right? Like, no, that does not feel good. Don't yeah. bite my nipple. Yes, that feels good. Bite my cheek right? or whatever it is for you. And I think often, like I said before, when we're stuck in that pattern of the A plus the B plus the C equals the O, then if we don't get the O, then we're like, we did all of this wrong. When if the pattern is now, what felt good for you? And did you express what you wanted? And did I express what I wanted? And did we stop when we were both pleasured full? Ooh. Oh, and you know, (laughs) oh. (laughs) Oh, yeah, no, that made me also think of like, there's this whole thing of receiving, Mm, right mm. um receiving versus giving who's providing who's who's receiving who's giving who's taking and those mm-hmm. are by the way providing and receiving are different energy than giving yes. and taking yes right yes 
yeah demanding and obliging Uh um mm, so taking comes without consent right so when we're yeah when we're moving yes right obligation is also giving without consent you are giving because you feel like if you don't you're not going to be safe right like oh well I guess I have to do this now you're not feeling like imminently threatened right you're not feeling coerced but there is a tiny bit of like that sounded like a question. And in reality, it was a statement, Uh right? This is something that TLC and I have been really like kind of venturing in and feeling into ourselves, like what parts feel good and what parts don't in like the polarity, masculine, feminine, dominant submission, like all of that, which you want to talk trauma. Like (laughs) every time I see anyone having conversations about this online, I'm just like, where's my popcorn, right? Like, because- (laughs) Everyone, this is, it's a highly activating topic and it's very tied to pleasure. Right. And, you know, like, I'm not even going to try to go into, this is a several hour thing that we actually talk about in some of our spaces around like evolution and biology and how we are programmed genetically to like receive and provide depending on what's what. And again, too much for today, but as we've been venturing into this, one of the things I've been really noticing is how much I have felt the need to manipulate Mm. myself or others in order to feel good Uh. or to get what I want that I think will help me feel good. Uh. And it's really learning. Can I express what I desire and can I express what I need? That is actually my real desire and real need and and not what I think someone else wants me to want or need. And can I do it in a way that is clean? Right. Like, can I do it in a way where whatever they say back doesn't shift what I say first? Ooh, yes. That's key. And you talk about feeling safe in your body. I mean, we, this just happened, like saying to TLC, how I was feeling about something. And before I would have said it in a very manipulative way to try to get him to act in a specific way. And I could see his body kind of like contract and tense around it. And I was like, may I please have your eyes? Mm. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, I'm not, this isn't me manipulating you. Uh This is me expressing how hard it is for me to be patient because I'm just not good at it. This is me telling you that I am having a hard time. Not that you need to shift your behavior. Yeah. I just want to be able to express that this is hard for me. I don't need you to do anything about it. Yes. And it totally shifted the energy because then it was like, okay, he's not obligated to show up in any kind of way, the way that he would have been before. Right. And I think he can actually feel the trust now of like, wow, whatever I do here, if it's coming from my center, if I'm not manipulating myself and I'm really feeling safe in my own body and Mm. my own feelings and my own decisions, whatever I do here is going to be the right thing. Yes. And it is going to be valued by her. Yes. And that's important. And I think one of the things we forget as we try to rehumanize ourselves and reconnect ourselves to our divinity is some of that other stuff we have been taught, right? Like we have been taught to manipulate people, whether you're a woman, a man, a non-binary, we have been taught the best way to get what you want, you know, bat your eyes like this. We have been taught to manipulate people in order to get what we want. Yeah. So then how, you know, start crying, particularly start crying. Oh, and yeah. The world will yeah. Use, fall at your feet. Yeah. Like use these particular threat responses, which we've talked about a lot. So yes. like if some, if, if, if this person does X, then I'm going to fawn. If this person does Y, then I'm going to fight. And it's not coming from a place of like, this is how I really feel right. or like I'm feeling in pleasure and safe and regulated in my body. I'm at home yes. in my body. It's coming yes. from I need you to shift how you feel in your body to feel better in mine. And like, that's the definition of codependency right there. Right, right. So when you're able to one, recognize that, and then two, be like, hey, I don't need to manipulate the situation. Let me drop into what I feel. Here's what I feel. Here's what I actually need. And here's what I actually desire and want. And that then changes everything else. So I think that is huge because you allow yourself the permission to feel good to Mm -hmm. come from an authentic place of here's what I want and here's what I desire and I think the minute for me sex is like a physical expression of our intimacy intelligence so 
my mom used to say to us all the time, if you can't talk about it, you shouldn't be doing it, right? Like then it's not a thing. Yeah. So if you're able to study even in the moment, hey, this doesn't feel good. And it's not because you're doing anything wrong. It's because I don't actually enjoy this. Yeah. Let's do this instead. Ah, yes, this feels good, right? Like, or I need to be able to say to you, or cry, right? To be able to cry during an intimate moment is a big thing because a lot of people associate tears with sadness or grief. And it is true. And also there is sadness and there's grief that still lives in our body. And sometimes you have a partner that is able to activate or touch the place your body is holding that sadness and grief, and then your body will release it. And if you don't have a partner who's able to be like, I can hold your tears too. You're then finding yourself back into a shame spiral. But if you're able to say, all of me is welcome here, whether you can hold this or not, then your body will be like, I'm going to cry now, or I'm going to orgasm now, or I'm going to scream now, or I'm going right? to... Yeah. So when your body can trust you to express yourself authentically without manipulating yourself, to try and manipulate somebody else, then things become a whole lot more pleasurable. I, you know, the one last thing I I really want to say, because I think that a lot of the listeners will, will resonate with this is, you know, one of the things that actually kept, I think both TLC and I from feeling like really safe in our bodies in just intimacy in general around feeling our feelings and like also like emotionally connecting, sexually connecting, like just connecting Mm -hmm. is that I did not own my yeses and nos. Mm. And I did not ask my body for consent before I did things or said yes to things because I had had so many experiences where it was explicitly shown to me that my consent didn't matter. Yeah. That the story I started telling myself was my consent doesn't matter. And so my husband deeply wanting to make sure that everything that we are doing in our relationship, just everywhere is something that I'm consenting to. That is a yes for me, or is maybe like, I don't know, but like, let's try it. And then I'll let you know if it's a yes or a no, right. That hurt his trust. Mm -hmm. And it made him feel really unsafe because the last thing that he wants to do is to lead me into something, you know, in any realm of our relationship, have me say, yeah, absolutely. Totally. Okay. And then at the end be like, actually, I hated that. Actually, I didn't want to do that in the first place. Actually, that felt awful. Uh And I think so often, and I, I am being, you know, heteronormative here because that's my experience. Please apply this in whichever way works for you. Uh, (laughs) I think a lot of times as a woman, it was, well, the way that you make him happy is by doing what he asks or or wants you to do. The thing that has taken me a really long time to learn and is just now like really dropping in is like, you know, the love of my life is happiest Mm -hmm. when I am enthusiastically and intentionally consenting. Mm -hmm. Yes, because then he can serve you the way that you desire to be served. Yeah, Mm -hmm. right. It doesn't feel good to provide for someone who doesn't appreciate what you are giving them and you can't appreciate somebody giving something to you if it's not what you want I mean you can but not fully right Right. Mm -hmm. like I can appreciate somebody giving me a birthday present that isn't something I really wanted because they thought of me like oh thanks for thinking of me. like when somebody gives me a present when they're like what do you want and I'm like yes I really want this. And they're like, okay, great. Not only am I giving you that, but I'm giving you like the all access upgraded, like (laughs) VIP version of that. Yes. That is like, that's a different level of appreciation. Yes. Because now you are both seen, you are both held, you are serving from a place of pleasure and desire versus here, let me feed you this. Oh, you don't like green beans. Well, I put in all this effort so you should eat them. Right. It's like, oh, right. And how many of us had that relationship with our parents or with our caregivers of like, you will eat what I put in front of you and you will be grateful for it. You know, you will take the job I've given you and you will take the the money that I've given you and you will will be grateful for it, even though you don't really like doing the work, like all of these places. And I think a lot of times with pleasure, we have that sexual connotation to it. And I think that that is 
I'm so glad that we talked about that. Mm-hmm. And this applies everywhere. Yes. Where- and that's one of the things I say all the time. Pleasure and sex are not synonyms. And yes, please, let's have pleasurable sex. Yeah. Can you be in pleasure when you're brushing your teeth? Are you brushing your teeth with the toothpaste that your mom told you, but you don't really like and it still burns your mouth? Right? Like there are a thousand toothbrushes right. and toothpaste on the market. Find one that feels good in your mouth. Find a toothbrush that feels good in your mouth. They make them bigger. They make them square. They make them motorized. Right. So can you be in pleasure when you're brushing your hair? Are you brushing your hair and you still, like for me, a hair was a very big conversation of pleasure that was missing from my life because it was still moving from that pain point right? It hurt. I would be tense. And I was now doing my own hair. Can I say my hair is lovely? I love you. You know, you're allowed to be curly and wavy. I love your curls. I love your braids. And can I brush my hair with a, this is going to feel good later. This is going to feel good now. Yeah. Right. There are a thousand brushes on the market. So yes, pleasure applies to your whole life. And yes, please let's have pleasurable sex. I want to end with this one example that actually I'm very proud of. And I, I love, you always make me want to brag about all the ways that I'm, I'm being in pleasure with myself. So I want to end with this. And then I would love for you to tell everyone about how they can work with you. You know, yesterday I was having a really rough day. Again, it's just been a really hard week. And I noticed myself starting to isolate because that's mm-hmm. what I do when things get really hard, not pleasurable. It's like, Hey, your feelings are too much for other people. And you're going to have to either I don't want to fake it and pretend I'm fine. Or also I don't want to bring down the mood by having the feelings I'm having. So I was really proud because I messaged these women that I was going to go meet with. And I was like, Hey, I'm not in an awesome place. And I'm coming anyway, because I'm practicing not isolating myself. And they were all like, Oh my gosh, we're so excited. You're coming. Like, we can't wait to like support you. So on the way I stopped at Starbucks and they were out of my favorite syrup. And so I was like, okay, let me like makeshift something that I think I'll like. So I ordered it. I got it. I'm driving. I get three sips in. Nope. And I was like, but you need the caffeine. Like you need the calories. You haven't really eaten. Like just, just drink it. And I heard my body go, no, we don't do that anymore. Mm. And so I pulled over and there was a Starbucks right by where I was going. And I ordered and paid for another drink because they had the syrup and I, I walked over and I got it. It took extra energy and effort. And I was like, I am worth that extra energy and effort. I can be five minutes late to this meeting because I have the drink that is going to help me feel good. Yes. And yes. I was like, I would have never done that. You're going to spend another $6 and go five minutes and you're going to make everybody, you're going to be, you're going to inconvenience people. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. I'm like, no, because that is what I need. Yes. So well bragged. Right. And I I want to share that with the listeners because that's small. And also that's big, big. That's a huge thing. And my mom used to say to us all the time when we go to the grocery store with the list that she gave us (laughs) and we'd come home with the substitution. And she would say, if they don't have what you want, don't let them force you into buying what they have. Oh, chill. The answer to that is the answer to that is no. If they don't have what you want, and that is, you know, wherever you are, Wait. if they don't have what you want, don't let them force you into buying what they have. Right. You're allowed to ask yourself, is yes. this an acceptable, is this an equal or better option? Right. And better, equal or better. Is this something even greater than I ever imagined? Yes. Yeah. If it's not the answer, it's that. It's that. Like you go, it has to be this. This is how I, we could talk all day, but there's been plenty of scenarios where I used to be like, it has to be like this. Yes. And then when I let that go, Mm -hmm. I was like, and you allow yourself to feel good. (laughs) And then you get something even greater. You're like, like, what was that? You're like, (laughs) okay. Right. And that's as detailed as I'm going to get, but you know, yes, there have been plenty of those experiences where it's like, can I trust myself to try this thing and see, and also not say beforehand, like, yeah, I'm definitely going to love this Mm -hmm. to go. I'm, I'm willing to entertain this. And also at any point throughout this, if it becomes a no five seconds in, it's a no. Yes. 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 Because consent is fluid as pleasure is fluid. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mm. now you all want to work with Torn and she's got this really cool thing coming up and, and actually, and I'm bragging that we created it together and came up together. So can you please (laughs) tell everybody about your offer? And then also you've got deeper 
more long-term intimate ways to work with you too. If people are like, oh, that doesn't feel right. But like, yes, I want to explore what this, this three, three, five looks like. Yes. Thank you. So what's coming up November 16th is a workshop for anybody 18 and over. It is called TNA tap in and activate your erotic prowess. And we're going to be using EFT tapping with solo sex practice to expand your life, your pleasure, and maybe even your orgasm. Orgasms are not guaranteed. But uh, so that is November 16th at three o'clock Pacific time. And it is 69.69. And you can... I have to tell this really quick. So, so we're like planning this out. First of all, you tapped into your pleasure around planning this offer out in our collective because we were talking through what you were going to do next. And you're like, oh, I'm not going to do that. And I was like, but it kind of feels like you want to. So like, okay. what if you just like took off all the pressure around it and just yeah. like went for it and just see what happens and So we were talking through it and I was like, wait, how much does it cost? And you were like $77. And I was like, no, it doesn't. It costs $69. (laughs) Yeah, that's exactly how I went. And then you were like, no, it doesn't. It costs $69 and 69 cents. And I was like, chef's kiss. Just, just. We need multiple 69s. We need multiple (laughs) opportunities. So (laughs) it just cracked me up because, you know, the 12 year old in me was like, hey. Exactly. Also, that's fun, right? That's yes. fun right there. Like, oh, there's this little rush around. I'm going to choose this number that everyone knows what it means, but I'm not going to say what it means. All right. And I'm going to play, use this play on words of TNA, but like it's tap in and activate, which are very yes. um, uh, nervous system, emotional regulation words and, and mind yes. words. And like, that's the thing is, is you're, you're bringing pleasure into your business and using it as we are planning and working on your business. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for your knowledge and wisdom and container and uh, sightseeing on all of this. So yeah, that's oh. November 16th, TNA workshop. And then you can always, not always, but my one-on-ones are still open. There is a space that I hold that is a pleasure practice specifically that is four months. And then if you want to go deep into your repattering and your reparenting and honoring your inner child and your vulnerable child, then we can go deeper. And that's available also for six months to begin with. So there are lots of spaces and you can find me all over the interwebs. I am torimcgill.com. I'm on Instagram as Tori McGill, Facebook, LinkedIn. You can even find me on Spotify and YouTube and TikTok. There it is. I was like, you're leaving off that last one. That's been very fun, which is TikTok. TikTok didn't even let her come on for like, or even post a video before it kicked you off the first time. You're too yeah. hot. But you've uh, wooed them into letting you be back on there and you're creating some beautiful waves over there. So thank you. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for, honestly, you know, I feel like the longer I do this, the safer I feel and really Mm. just sharing all parts of me. It's a practice. Yeah, it is a practice. So just thank you to all of you who listen and and allow me to feel accepted and psychologically Mm. safe because that's a big deal. And Torin, thank you for always creating that space. I always feel that way with you. So thank you. Same. I always feel that way with you. It's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for again, holding the space and letting me be in your space as I am and all of the things. It's always a great pleasure to see you and to be with you. Y'all just, just, just go hire her. Okay. (laughs) I love you. We'll see you next week. We're bringing a really cool announcement next week. So be sure to tune in and yeah, we'll talk to you then. Bye y'all. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Invitation to head to our show notes to check out the offers and connections we mentioned, or you can just head straight over to instituteforTrauma.com and hop in our email list so that you never miss any of the cool things that we're doing over at the Institute invitation to be well and to take care of yourself this week and we'll see you next time.